Hey man, those bees look really groovy, man. How do you get started doing the bees, man? Hey, hi there, Hippie Paul. You want to learn about uh, starting to keep bees? I might be able to help you out with some of that. There's a few steps that you're going to need to take in order to uh, get and keep bees. First thing you're going to want to do is find a place to keep them. Um, if you do a search online using the Googles uh, for urban beekeeping, you'll find them say things like, you have to be sure that it's on one, at least one-tenth of an acre. Well, that may be true. But one thing that I have learned keeping bees, they have wings. They can fly. So, and they will fly. They will fly two or three miles away from their home to find resources. So, yeah, you don't have to have a huge yard to have um, a hive or two of bees. Um, one thing they do need to have that's close by is water. Now, if you don't live within a couple miles of a pond, a river, a stream, a lake, uh, you're going to probably have to provide water. And there's different ways of doing that. Um, I have a video out where I show how I make a five gallon um, feeder pail. And uh, I use that for I use that for sugar water in the springtime to help get them going. And I use it for plain water in the summertime. If you or your neighbors have a swimming pool, you're going to have a hard time keeping your bees away from that. They love the pool. You'll see them with their towels and they'll be uh, all decked out there getting some pool time. Hey man, I know that a lot of people have bees like out on the farms, man. But like what if you, what if you live like in the city, man? Well, for urban beekeeping, hippie Paul, um, before you get your bees, you're going to want to check on any local regulations that you might have in your area. Um, many cities and many towns will, will require you to get a permit and in order to get that permit you're going to have to do things like write your neighbors letters and let them know what's going on and get feedback and that sort of thing. You'll probably have to show them what kind of experience or expertise you have with bees um, and things like that. They'll have other hoops you gotta jump through. That's the government that's what they do and I don't know man I feel like I feel like I'm I'd be out there all by myself man well one thing I would do hippie Paul is if you're new starting out um, check around for a local beekeeping club a local beekeeping association that can be a great resource to use uh, to get information about how to keep them questions that you might have while you're keeping them and uh, quite possibly to find a mentor to help you out uh, making decisions that you're not comfortable with and uh, making sure that you're doing the best you can with your bees. Now um, you may also want to uh, get some books and read some books about bees and beekeeping so that you kind of know what's going on and what to expect and um, there's lots of and lots and lots of videos out there on YouTube but keep in mind beekeeping is very local and what that means is what works in uh, sunny southwestern Florida hey Tim may not necessarily work up here in uh, cold Arctic northeastern Minnesota hey man that's groovy but uh, what kind of hives are there, man? Well, you're going to want to decide on what kind of hive you want to keep. Uh, most people use the Langstroth hives. Now, that's the, the square boxes that you see and that you're very familiar with. But there's also uh, Ware hives, which are square also, but they're smaller. And there's also top bar hives, which is what I've been using. The Langstroth hive is a good option for a beginner because the, the uh, 
parts for that hive are available easily and most people keep them so there's a lot more people there if you have questions to be able to give you answers. Now Warray highs I don't know that much about. I do know that they've got smaller frames so they are lighter than uh, Langstroth but I've never had any experience so I don't really have any guidance to give you on that one. Top bars now they they to me are probably the easiest work. They're the lightest. Um, they don't require extra parts on hand. All you need is the high body and top bars. That's all you need. Um, they're the easiest for me to work on. Alright man, I got it. So I'm just going to start beekeeping. What do I do? Well, once you, do, once you get you going, you're going to want to get your equipment. You're going to want to get your hives, your frames, your hive stands, um, whatever you want to get. And then you're going to want to get that stuff painted. Um, all exterior parts of the hive should be painted or stained or treated somehow so it withstands the weather and lasts longer. Um, you're going to find that keeping bees can be very expensive. So you're going to want your materials to last as long as they can. Now you don't have to paint on the inside. The bees will take care of the inside. They'll coat it with uh, propolis, which is a bee glue, and they use that to seal. And um, they'll do that for you. But you're going to want to paint the outside or stain or treat it somehow. You're also going to want to get tools. Um, tools like a hive tool. Um, that's what you use to move the frames with or to scrape with. Um, a smoker. Now, not everybody uses a smoker, but... Um, you use a smoker to uh, drive the bees down into the hive or to calm them. So most beginners use a smoker. I use a smoker, so I'm a beginner. Also you're going to want to consider what kind of protective clothing that you want to have. Now some people want to use the full bee suits. Some people are comfortable just wearing a jacket. Um, other people are comfortable just wearing a veil or gloves, and some people don't wear any protection at all. It's really, there's no right or wrong answer. It's what you feel the most comfortable with. I'm comfortable with a veil. Um, I will wear gloves if the ladies start to get a little, little testy, um, but otherwise, just the veil for me. I have not had to use a suit or a jacket yet. Knock on wood. That's that's far out, man. Hey, man, how? What do, what do I do, man? Do I just put like the boxes out there, man? And like the bees will come, like move into the hives and 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 like that'd be far out, man. All right. Now that you're getting all ready to go, you have to order your bees. Order bees? Is that like ordering pizza, man? Uh, call up Domino's, man, and order some bees. They need to do that usually in January or February. And um, you'll be either ordering uh, package bees, which are bees that come in a cage, and it's got a queen inside that cage inside of a separate cage. And um, many people start off with a nuke or nucleus hive. And what that is is four or five frames of bees, brood, um, and food. It also has a queen that's laying, and it is set up. It is good to go. Um, it is already a hive. You don't. It doesn't have to establish itself. So all you do is you put it into a bigger box, either a 10 frame or an 8 frame Langstroth hive, and uh, put some empty combs frames on uh, either side of the four or five that you get from the supplier and uh, let them take off. You do typically will get uh, nukes a little bit later in the season than you get packaged bees. Some people also will put out um, swarm traps that will get you some free bees. Swarm traps are designed to capture swarms from beehives and uh, what a swarm is 
is the hive will grow and feel like they need to split, like they need more room. So the queen will leave the hive and will, she will take half of the population with her and uh, they will go find a new home. So if you have a swarm chap, there's a chance that you could get her and get them into that new home. The common way of hiving bees is the shake method. You take the cage and you shake the bees into the new hive. Now some people don't like that. They, they think it's really uh, obtrusive to, and uh, invasive for the bees. And what they'll do is they'll put the box of bees, like the cage of bees, into a hive, close it up, and let the bees climb out as they will. Um, you know, whatever works best for you, whatever you feel most comfortable with. I tend to shake the bees out because I need to get them going as soon as possible. It's Minnesota and the season is short. Well, that gets you going on beekeeping. Um, it's an enjoyable hobby and it's fascinating to learn each time you go into that hive. Hey man, what? Once you get them like in the box, man, what do you do then? Like, do you have to just let them, let them jive, man? Let them, let them be on their own. You know, don't be messing with the man or with the bees, man. What's that? How often do you check them? Well, that's really going to be up to you. Um, it also is going to be up to the type of hive that you chose. Now, a lot of people with Langstroths will just set them up and just let them be. Maybe add a box or two every now and again, but they don't feel like they need to check them very frequently. Um, I use a top bar hive and I need to be in there every week to every 14 days to make sure that they're drawing that comb straight. Um, if they go too long, what may happen is they may curve a comb and then once they do that, the next comb is going to be curved even more, and then even more, and then you've got one comb that's connected to maybe two or three bars, and um, that makes it difficult to work in that hive. So when you are working with them with top bar hives or with um, foundationless frames in a Langstroth hive, you're going to want to check them more frequently until they get the combs built up. Uh, just to make sure that they are building them straight and that uh, everything is good to go. And like I said before, you have to decide what you think is best for you and your bees. Most of all, you have to enjoy it. So, hippie Paul, I think you, you've got a good chance to find yourself a fun hobby. Good luck with that. Wow. Well, Thanks, man. That was really, that was really useful, man. I, uh, I'm going to start taking care of some bees, man. Peace out, man. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give us thumbs up. Thumbs up are super cool, and you too can be super cool if you give me one. Hi Hippie Paul would appreciate it as well. That's true. Um, another thing you can do that's super cool is you can subscribe. If you haven't yet, click on that subscribe button. Smash it. Smash it. It doesn't cost you anything, and it means a lot to me. It means a lot to Junior, and it means a lot to Hippie Paul. Once you do subscribe, you're going to want to do something else. You want to hit that little bell right next to the subscribe button. And what that's going to do for you is it's going to give you notifications every single time I upload a video. Every time. Without fail. Unless YouTube goes and deletes it, which they've been known to do. But in the ca that case, you just uh, click the bell again. See? You can beat them at their own game. Alright. Thanks again for watching. I'll be sure to tell Hippie Paul that you appreciated him, too. Have a great day.